T T B Music Podcast. day of the year so far i believe it may uh, well be or, or close to it yeah and, and for the benefit of people listening a week from now we've already dated the uh, podcast yes <laughs> <laughs> oh it's wonderful to be back it is and we are back with six newish albums uh arcade fire we um Sigrid, uh how to let go dubstar 2 Hailstorm, Back from the Dead, Sunflower Bean, Head Full of Sugar, and mm-hmm. Tears for Fears, The Tipping Point. So. <laughs> Sorry, I'll not finish. Dubstar 2, Hailstorm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, when, I, when I first saw the title of Dubstar album, I, I, I was thinking, well, they definitely made albums after that first one. And I, had to, I literally had to go back and go, oh, okay, yeah, I guess it's the second album since they've come back yeah, together. Yeah, the, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Getting ahead of us, obviously getting ahead of ourselves somewhat. Yeah. Um, so, we will start off with Arcade Fire album number six. Um, we have reviewed them many times in the past, um, but the only two that are available on our streaming podcast back catalogue uh, are Reflector from Podcast 11 2013 Good grief. and the last album uh, Everything Now on Podcast 7 of 2017. Wow. Do you want to know what we said about those albums, Pete? I'm curious to know what we said about the, the later one, because I can't remember listening to it. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll start, Which kind of leads into some of the things I'm going to say. <laughs> I'll start with Reflector. With, 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 with yes, Reflector. I remember Reflector. Okay, Reflector, 2013. You said, yeah. an album I desperately wanted to like, but it misses the mark. Oh, really? Oh, that mm. is interesting. That uh, is interesting. Well, as I said, not a bad record, but the more it goes on, it just gets a bit dull. Yeah, yeah, you're spot on. Spot on there. Um, yeah. Everything now. Yeah, go on. You said, it's okay. It's a pop album trying to get out of an Arcade Fire album. Wow. And then you also mentioned, lyrically, the irritating intellectual angle, quote unquote. Oh God, that is me, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Whilst I said it sounded a bit like a live and kicking ear of simple minds <laughs> in places. And wasn't an album I'd still be listening to at the end of the year. And so and, was I correct. In fact, I have not listened to it again since. It's 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 funny because in preparation for this particular album review, I, I actually went back and listened to some of their old, in fact, most of their back catalogue. And when I got to reflect... I listened to the first two again. I, I mean, I don't have time for this sort of stuff normally. I really don't. Um, and yeah, we'll come back to the first two. But, but I listened to Reflector and I think your review is absolutely spot on. I don't mind it as much as I clearly minded it then. <laughs> Sorry, yes. um, I, I think that's perhaps a little unfair, but your review is absolutely spot on. As for everything now, I completely forgot we'd ever listened to it and I actually thought we'd missed that one. So that, that <laughs> to be, to, to be that's fair, a review in itself. Okay. Yeah. To be fair, when I was looking for yeah. the, when I was looking up for the albums to do this bit since we started doing mm. the thing, I also thought we hadn't reviewed it. Yeah. So there we go. And then it was only because I was looking, just got up, well, I'll just check. And it was like, Oh, we did. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you did. Anywho, so we're wow. not we're not clearly here to review the old albums. We are here to review We. We. W E not W-E. O We U not I. Yeah, exactly. Which it could have been. Anyway <laughs> Shall I kick off? Absolutely. Right. Please do. So I better had. Um let's get us back on track. I No, I'll come back to that. Um, no, I won't. I'll start there. This album, for me, actually harks back somewhat to those first two or three albums, um, two of which you've you've listened to recently. I actually, I've listened to um, Neon Bible again very recently as well. Um, not to say that they're the same, um, but it very much I feel harks back to that sort of era of their career. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually think this is the best that they've done since the suburbs in 2010 which means this is their best album in over a decade we were just drinking the suburbs yeah we were 
Um, Hope you noticed my choice of beer. Oh, I didn't. Oh, fine. Well done. Well done. Uh, I think Age of Anxiety 1 and 2. I, I mean, even down to the track listing. When you go back to the original, you know, RK Fire Funeral. Yeah. And that the, sort of the track listing, part 1, 2, 3. Even down to that, there's a little nod to the past. Um, at, but again, I very much feel, certainly in the first half, there's much more of, of an electronic album trying to get out. Oh my goodness, did I not just say that five years ago about something else? Um, but very much their territory lyrically in terms of, you know, dealing with a, a world full of loss and confusion. Um, I really liked, and this won't surprise you, I really like part two, Rabbit Hole, which is, is, is lyrically minimal. Yeah. It's basically just a disco stomper. Um, and hearing Arco Fire do a disco stomper, I, I've really, I, that's my standout track of the album. <laughs> the one without the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that's prelude, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, oh, yes, there's prelude as well. No, it's definitely um, um, Rabbit Hole. Yeah. Um, we, I think that would just play well everywhere. And then you do a sharp left. So you have these first two tracks that sort of set out the album. Then you do a sharp left, you have prelude, and then you go into a End of Empire parts one through three uh, with its Lennon-esque or possibly even Damon Albarn um, places of lament and soliloquy. Thinking back to Albarn's recent yeah, yeah. Icelandic piece. Um, before the anthemic, anthemic, anthemic coast chorus kicks in. Um, this leads, of course, into... Sagittarius A or A star um, and then I feel the album loses some pace it sort of goes into sort of a mid 80s drift of MOR um, but returns I think with the lightning too uh, which is the right time for it to pull back because I think there's there's a moment where it does almost lose me again I think oh my goodness we're going into the second half of the arcade yeah. album and I'm going to fall asleep no it pulls me back out um, and it, Again, look out, kid. Race and religion under unconditional parts one and two. Um, sort of brings it all back together. So in summary, I'm going to say this a few times tonight. It's a solid album. I think it's one of their better albums and probably their best for a long time. My review of this is going to be interesting because cool. it's what you said. Um, my first thought listening to the album and certainly listening to the start of the album relates to the comment that I sent you earlier on today, which like I thought, it's a Coldplay album, isn't it? Mm-hmm. The start of the, and I don't have anything against Coldplay, um, not a bad band, but they're not a band that's ever excited me at all. Mm. And Arcade Fire used to be a band that used to excite me. Yeah. And this album, and particularly the first half of this album, yeah. didn't excite me at all. Hey! <laughs> numbed me and Excellent. not in a good way oh this is interesting yeah right Age of Anxiety and Empire of, uh, yeah. and End of Empire really really for me quite dull alright so that's the stuff uh, I'm into and latter the, the one to three which you've heard on was definitely a cross between Lennon's Imagine and a kind of discarded Pink Floyd album track but oh. without the grace of having a David Gilmore solo to kind of lift it up and make mm. it yeah. More interesting. Although, although, although they then kind of throw in a bit of kind of seventies Bowie, or maybe is it kind of like late seventies, early early eighties Billy Joel at one point in it. Um, and then you get to part four of it when it says unsubscribe, and at this point, listening to the album, I was thinking, yes, where do I unsubscribe from this record? <laughs> Quite like that one though. Just <laughs> no, I, I was just yeah. like, really That's at this point, this, this, this point, yeah. yeah, I was just thinking, yeah. this is rubbish. Ah, interesting. Then oh, I like the second. I like the second half. Of the you album. like the yeah. Pulling Light, up, lightning happens. From the... Yeah, lightning happens. Yeah, yeah. Suddenly it's back to original arcade fire. All of a sudden, uh, even though it does have a bit of Neil Young's "Only Love Can Break Your Heart" uh-huh. kind of wavering about in the background. Um, you have part one of that, and then part two does the thing that they've done. I like part two many times before. Yeah. In a similar kind of thing, when they start off in one version, and then the second part is let's speed it up. Make yes. it slightly more rocky. Yeah. So they've done it before and probably done it to death. But yeah. still, it's a trick that's still working for me. It's not dull. Um, as you say, the unconditional, unconditional both parts, including one part that's got Peter Gabriel singing on it, uh, are all right, quite nice. Um, and then you end with that kind of, you come up with the final track is, but it's kind of a gentle kind of, well, it's we, it's a title yeah, track. It's we. I like that. Um, it's a nice closer. 
So for me, I would have an EP <laughs> of the... As soon as you get past Prelude, second mm. half of the album, uh-huh. that's quite nice. Uh, ditch the Coldplay boring bit at the start. I like the Coldplay boring bit. Uh, <laughs> that's interesting. I have been listening to a lot of David Bowie this year. Um, I'm going on some sort of... I've sort of made it my mission to go on a deep dive, particularly 70s stuff, actually. Um, so maybe I'm picking up... Maybe that's in, that's perhaps influencing my my review. And of course, we we all recall the, the Arcade Fire David Bowie connection as well. Yes. Um, and he, he very much rated them. Uh, so maybe maybe that's sort of pulling at a string there as well. But that, that is interesting. And we've gone for the, the classic Pete and Scott split. Which we haven't done for a while. No, we haven't. Actually, since cool. Moving on. Uh, second album from Sigrid, How to Let Go. Uh, we reviewed the debut album on podcast two of 2019. Um, she's described this album as being more organic than the first album, mm. uh, mainly because I think it's had more kind of more kind of live live musician kind of stuff. So more stuff recorded actually live rather than just programmed and stuff like that. Um, let's get the main thing over with first. It's not going to suck a punch. But it's not going to suck a punch mainly because Sucker Punch was just such a fantastic pop record. Um, uh, I think we, we, we both, both loved it, and I, I certainly still yeah. think it's probably one of the best pure pop albums of the last decade. Yes. Listened to it in the car the other, the, 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 about a couple, of week, a couple of weeks ago again, and it was just like, you know what? This album is still, start to finish, really, really good. Not reviewing that album, reviewing this album. This is still a really good record. Mm. And still a really good pop record. Yeah. Everything you want from a good pop record. So you've got your dance tunes, you've got Mirror, which was the debut single from, 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 from it. Great bass line, banging bass line, in fact. Driver Saved My Life, and there's another, another song that's also kind of like disco influence to come up with what it is. You've got the ballads on there, Last to Know, and Mistake to Know You, although the latter one's a bit too kind of cast off Adele for my liking. A bit <laughs> kind of, you know, a bit... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Certainly, po- I mean, well, certainly, uh, for me, it is the weakest track on the record. Yeah. Lovely bit of acoustic folk pop on Grow. Mm. Um, and then even a bit of rock, where she does a uh, collab with Sheffield's finest uh, Bring Me the Horizon on yeah, yeah. Uh, the last single, Bad Day, which is a really good song. I enjoy that. Um, and in between that, you've just got some just great pop tunes. I mean, the, the, the album starts off brilliantly. You've got, uh, for me, you've got four absolutely killer tracks. Um, and I say killer tracks in one without, without a pun but uh, so you've got get, get Dark Burning Bridges Risk Getting Hurt and the It's a Bit Like The Killer's Human Isn't It Thank Me Later uh, uh, perfect examples of just just really good banging pop tunes yeah, simple yeah, pop yeah. tunes um, right. and even on, on particularly on um, Risk Getting Hurt probably as close to kind of lo-fi indie as you're probably going to get with Sigrid because it starts off with the ding 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 um it's just you know it's it's like the last album it's it's good vibes infectious pop fun and yes some of the lyrics are a bit light I suppose you might you might say even though they're about parent dreaming with anxiety relationships and you might kind of think it's a bit simplistic but you know it's just a bad day not a bad life for example maybe simplistic but you can feel the kind of empathy in it and particularly if you've got a a daughter that's about to approach her teenage years and stuff like that that it kind of rings true with that kind of audience I think certainly just with the audience of one in my household Mm. Um, so yeah it still ticks all the pop boxes for me it's it's not as good as the first album but then again first album was so bloody good it'd be kind of hard hard to do so what she's done still pretty good Uh, enjoyable we're, we're very much in agreement on this one um it is not the um, it is not the it's not the the, the, the spectacular debut um, for me. I felt in, in a way, I felt in a way actually it was almost a little bit more commercial or or, or plastic in ter- in places. It, mm. You know, it's a great solid uh, pop album. It's a great collection of pop classics. I don't think all of them quite hit the mark, but they all sound good. 
Yeah. And the, the album as a whole has a kind of a very polished... And she's, it's interesting she describes it as organic. I think the creation of the songs for sure. But it, it feels like that classic second album. It's, 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 much, it's much cleaner sounding. Um, and actually, when it comes to, to Sigrid, I found that a bit, little bit off-putting. Yeah, the, 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 I mean, I think I think you're right. There's, yeah. def- there's definitely the first album definitely sounded individualistic. Yes, yeah. And I think a, a vocal delivery is still individualistic. Yes, but, but, oh, absolutely. But but absolutely. some but some of it did. Yeah. Uh, fall into the oh yeah, there's lots of people doing this kind of music and, and, and well, including Yay. people like Dua Lipa, and we love the Dua Lipa album absolutely. for example and some of that. Yeah, but, great album. But again, the, yeah, I think I think there is an element of some of the songs where you're thinking, well, this could almost could be anybody doing this, but yes. it's still, but it's yes, it's, it's still, still it's still quality writing. It's still great, and uh, thank me later. I think it was stand out for me as well, mm. um, too. So um, yeah, good track, good track. So for me, and uh, yeah, solid solid pop record. So, on to album number five by uh, Dubstar. Um, even though the album is called number two. Or number two, sorry, number two. Two. Do number two. Two. Um, and this is, yeah, kind of had to review this one, really, really, because we've had many conversations in the past about Dubstar's debut album, which we're both Aww. big fans of. Brilliant. Um, so it seemed a good chance to kind of, like, revisit an old band from... Our past to find out yeah. if they could still cut it or not, Peter. So, given that for me the opening track sounded very much like a band that you like, yeah. <laughs> do you like this album, Pete? <laughs> I like this album, which will surprise no one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting because Dubstar, I mean that 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 debut many years now, decades ago now. Um, aside it's never really been a band I've listened to much um, and well, everyone's always telling yeah, me yeah, oh you like this so you must like that <laughs> I'm, I'm the same one of those you know I listen to, I've listened to the debut album quite, yeah. quite a few times it might be in here actually. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously um, yeah stars and um, oh, stars. It's not so yeah. manic now. Not so manic now. Particularly, which came up on a playlist yes. of mine recently, and yes. even Dive's going, "What is that?" But it's Dubstar. It's Dubstar. Obviously. How, can, how can you not know this song? So, so it's funny because they fell into a gap in, in the, when it's sort of like mid to late nineties when it's like uh, that sort of music wasn't fashionable yet. Again, uh, <laughs> you know, but clearly appealed appeal to us. It is. This is a classic synth pop album from Sheffield, and and again the, the heritage there. When you think of it, it's not just Pet Shop Boys, although it is very Pet Shop Boys in places. It's it's bands like and it's lyrics like Human League, yes, and Seventeen. It's got that sort of heritage to it as well, but at the same time, it's purely dubstar. Um, the storytelling, um, the classic melodies from the sort of early eighties through to nineties uh, pop music. Uh, it it it's, it's it reeks of. Of nostalgia, but in a good way, in a way that actually, if someone picked this up having never heard of this band, they could enjoy. Yes, um, I agree totally. You know, so it, it remains relevant in that sense. Um, there are no standout classics. You could argue it's all a bit Radio Two in places um, where no doubt it is. It, it is. Plays very, well. Yes, it is very Radio Two. Yeah, but that's not that's not a bad thing. That's Peter. not no. But I mean that it's not a bad thing. It is a very pleasant and enjoyable thing in this instance. Um, and I, again, having not listened to their, uh, I've not listened to one, which no, neither I, now, I now think is a crime. I, I think it's a really strong album, possibly their best sort of coming together in years. Um, one aside, which I have obviously not qualified to say, I haven't listened to. And I think, you know, tracks like uh, Token, which very much sets the tone at the opener, hmm. uh, Lighthouse, um, Hygiene Strip is interesting. Yeah. Love Hygiene Strip. I love Hygiene Strip. Um and the closer as well, kissing to be unkind. I think that's possibly one of the best on there. It's it's really not. It's a really good album. It's a really good album. Um, yeah. Am I am I suddenly a dubstar fan again? I, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't, uh, no, I don't know if I should like something because because I like another thing. <laughs> no, no, it's very I, familiar. I mean, I I, I, I agree. It's yeah. just you know, it's. I I was. 
I was out on a very long walk when I listened to it the first 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 time, and obviously the first track came on, and I was just walking along laughing because I was just thinking, "My God, this is so Pet Shop Boys." Yeah. <laughs> And also, I was thinking, please don't make, please don't make the whole album be like this. Yeah. And that's no offence to the Petrol Boys, because you know I've, I've said very yeah. nice things about the Petrol yeah. Boys. But I was thinking, no, please don't make them turn into the Petrol Boys. Yeah. Because like, the thing I loved about them were they were not synthy, yes. but indie synthy. Yes. Rather yeah. than yeah. Thankfully. Yeah. It goes back into more kind of traditional. And you know what? Was, after that yeah. opening opening track. And I was glad of that as well. Yeah. Actually, because I thought I don't need a Petrol Boys album. I have Pet Shop Boys albums. Yes. <laughs> um, and what you've got is is really good. And it's a huge job, one of our classic things. Really good, solid collection of tunes. And it's because you got the single um, "I Can See You See You Outside," which has been played on Radio Two and uh, <laughs> and, and various other other things, which is a really yeah. slick kind of yeah. intro number, um, which definitely could have been on any of those first couple of albums. Yeah. And you you wouldn't have. No, you can put it again. It was on the first episode of yeah, yeah, sure it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. It has that kind sure. of sound. Yeah. Uh, but you all highlighted like Lighthouse and the Hygiene Strip, which I think are really good. Social Proof, also really, really light. Um, all examples of that synth based kind of indie dream pop that made me a fan of, of, the, of the debut debut album. Uh, and they took off with an absolutely cracking cover of REM's Perfect Circle at the end. Hmm. Uh, which is one of my favourite Arium albums, Murmur, um, which is just lovely. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, this will be listened to again. Yeah. For sure. Welcome back. Welcome. Next up, we go rocking with Hailstorm Back from the Dead. Uh, we reviewed their last album, Vicious, um, Podcast 7 2018, uh, which I described as Joan Jet Glam meets the Foo Fighters. <laughs> And thought it started and ended well, but in the middle was a bit kind of meh. Um, and you said modern metal with a proper vocalist, a solid album. Don't like the ballads though. There we go. That's my review. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, do album. Interesting. Um, Interesting. Yeah, exactly. There. <laughs> Kicking off. Oh, Peter. The album kicks off <laughs> yeah. the title track. Yeah. And. What I mean to like the best album is it's a really compact album of three and a half minute songs. Mm. And it's like being, tra- it's almost like being transported back to the early 80s and kind of when, in my mind, people made kind of proper metal albums. Um, it's just like you're thinking, oh, cool, this is great. It's like, this is this is what things are meant to sound like. Mm. Um, and it's just proper loud and how rock records should be for me this record um, my notes I think I lost my notes this album um, but so it kicks off kick, you kick off with the, f- the first the first track trying to track and it's like in your face kind of like proper rock proper, proper metal and you're thinking okay this is good this is good and that pretty much continues for the, for the whole of the record bar the two ballads obviously yeah. um and as you rightly said on the last review, um, they should avoid doing the ballads because the ballads are by far the two worst tracks on this album and the one right at the end is fucking awful. <laughs> um, the horns thing, which is obviously obviously classic thing of like, oh, you come, to the, you come to the gigs and you stick your hands in the air and you sing along and the piano band going, oh, yeah. You're thinking, why don't you just end this on the track before that was kind of like rocking and... Kind of Foo Fighter-ish, and it's just uh, rather than this dirge, uh-huh. um, and it is a shame because I think Lizzie Hale has an absolutely fantastic rock voice. Yes, proper kind of metal yes, yes. singing voice, and up until that point, you've you've pretty much got thirty. If you take the ballads out, you've got kind of like twenty-five minutes, thirty minutes of really. Good, proper, solid, solid in a good way. Yeah. Rock metal music, uh, and it's just a really, really enjoyable album. And I, I think I doubt even if I ch- ch- we might we might re- review more metal albums this year. I don't know, but even if we even if we did, I don't think you'd find a better out better example of the genre. Mm-hmm. Um, 
this year unless it was another Foo Fighters album because I think they have a lot in common with Foo, Foo Fighters actually because like I said this last time around I think they what they have is the ability to both rock out properly yeah. as a proper metal album a proper metal band but also produce good catchy tunes as well mm. um, and you can imagine the, the production of this album is also I think also worth talking about because it, it's one of those things you listen to and I was listening to the headphone phones where, where you could quite easily imagine yourself being in the live gig. Yeah. So they had to have that kind of a stadium rockness to them, if you like. But you can imagine the, the kind of sound, the wall of sound, sound of that the sound coming out and thinking, yeah, that would be good. So yeah, thumbs up. Good, 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 good rock, good rock metal album. I'll refer you to my review previously. Yes. <laughs> um, only I'll slightly amend it, much to your shock and horror, I think. Um, agree with you on Raise Your Horns. I actually thought Terrible Things was alright. Um, uh, it's, like it's almost pop music. And maybe that's what you object to, because um, it's a, otherwise it's a proper rock metal album. I've actually written here, classic metal. You know, no sort of veering off into different cores, like, like Matt's core or... <laughs> yeah, whatever, core, whatever, 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 core, right, whatever yeah. core we were reviewing last time. Um, this is proper met, proper rock, proper rock music. I also, um, again, influenced by our recent Baby Queen gig. Um, I saw yeah. a, a neat little parallel there, but although this is obviously slightly heavier uh, musically, um, uh, lyrically perhaps not as clever. Um, uh, and you know, and there's tracks like the, the Steeple. Uh, and I come first, which are fairly self-explanatory. Um, Although the steeple people thing, I could have done. That's what I mean. I could, I could, I could, I could, I could have done. I could have done that. I could, I could, I could have done without that rhyming. Yes, uh, steeple people. And, uh, yeah, okay, we get it, we get it. But it's an honest record. It's a straightforward record. You know what you're getting. It's it's simple as. Also, I'd really like bombshell. Bombshell, which I think, which I think was the end. Yeah. Uh, bombshell has. I've got. Yes. Yeah. If I managed to recover my note, bombshell has. Uh, a line in it that I really liked. I can quickly find find the uh, thing. On. She's not fragile like a flower. She's fragile like a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was really good. It's really good. Yeah, exactly. That's one of my favorite favorite kind of couplets of the uh, podcast. Actually, I thought, yeah, that's. I know. I've got one of one of my favorite couplets we haven't covered yet. Pretty sm- <laughs> a pretty smart. Uh, a pretty smart uh, yeah. bit of writing. So I, li- I like that. Cool. Okay, moving on to my phone not working properly. Good grief. Uh, I'm struggling with the tech here. Yeah. It's the heat. It is. Moving yeah. on to Sunflower Bean, a band that I have to confess, never heard of before. Uh, but this is album number three by this uh, New York three piece. Um, They said about this album, because apparently they've, they've changed their sound a bit over the course of the three records. Uh, tomorrow is, basically was like, tomorrow is not certain, so why not make a dance record? Which is an interesting comment to make about this record. That but, really is interesting. Or more to make, make an album that wants to make you dance, I should perhaps oh, qualify. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which, is right, perhaps, yeah. which is perhaps a fairer comment, uh, g- yeah. given the uh, s- musical stylings of the record. Yeah. Because I think we're talking indie pop alert. Yeah. I think we are. What's your opinion? Um, this is the album I struggled with most out of this selection of six albums that we're reviewing this time. It's, um, I listened to it multiple times as well. I just couldn't get my head around it. It's reminiscent of, or has shades of, I should say, uh, bands like Tame Impala. Um, who's the other one? Um, Devo. You know, it, yeah. it, it's it's there, and um, it, it's almost a little, it's almost, it's almost a, a little bit of Fleetwood Mac buried in there somewhere as well. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, which which I appreciate, but for me, I really struggled with this one. Like, it's indie pop alternative pop indie tunes it's solid enough oops there I go again but it was just a little bit all over the place for me in terms of the sort of eclecticness of it you know it's, it's dance danceability for sure I appreciate that comment now because it's certainly not a dance album but um, and it's got some great tracks like In Flight um, and Stand By Me were the two that I sort of pulled out of the middle there 
Uh, but for me, I really sort of, I, I, I couldn't quite get my head around this one, if I'm perfectly honest. But it's okay. That's, that's, that's funny, because oddly I wasn't sure of this album initially, initially either at the start. But I ended up thinking it was actually kind of strangely classic CTTB, really. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, opening track for me is a uh, great bit of indie pop. Um, followed by, by like I said in flight which is great great yeah and then, and then you think you kind of in, in certain certain in which direction it's going and it's indie leanings mm. and then you get other side which reminded me quite a bit of Wolf Alice oh, I didn't know that at all um, <laughs> interesting yeah <laughs> yeah because it's kind of quieter now and it's you kind said of it that, that, yeah, that, yeah, it has yeah, that kind okay, of element yeah. element no, but then, but then that. we go, but then yeah. we go all kind of proper indie rock on yeah. uh, roll the dice, and you kind of thinking, ooh. So yeah. we've started off kind of like indie pop, maybe. There's, there's other things going on, and now we're going to ratchet it up and going to go, okay, that's what we're doing. But then you've got the title track, which is pure UK nineties indie. Mm. You know, it's Stone Roses esque yeah. kind of indie thing. You're thinking, okay. Okay, I'm going that way. Okay, that's fine. Um, before it then gets all grungy. That towards the end of the way, you go, baby, don't cry. Yeah. Beat the odds. Um, feel somebody, which reminded me of um, L Seven. Um, wow. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, wow, just we just like turned up to kind of like full on kind of like grunge pop. That, yeah. And I think that's I think that's possibly potentially what where I've struggled. It does sort of seem to veer and collide through different shades of indie and yeah. pop. And I haven't even mentioned the catches that track on yeah. the thing, which which reminded me of Summer Camp, which is I don't have control sometimes. Yeah, which is in the middle of the album, which I just thought was just like pure. Okay. I think I need poptastic. Yeah, I, um, you know, I I think it, it requires a few listens. This one, for sure, but. Certainly an interesting Indeed. record. Uh, so finally, oh, I think finally is my my phone. Shall I shall I intervene? <laughs> my, well, it's, it's tears for fears. I'm, I just, I'm just trying it's to a like, tipping point. Yes, it's a tipping point. Yes. Uh, which is their seventh album, fifth with Kurt Smith, right? Because they made the cover, oh, yeah. and their first studio album uh, since two thousand and four, right? So quite a while ago. Yeah. Uh, partly because of them not liking each other for a while. And... <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. no, that's not true. They always kind of liked each other, they just, but they just struggle to get on with each other when they're together. Um, in fact, particularly, even, apparently it's still the same now. Apparently when they're on the road together, they still rub each other at the wrong way. That's interesting, isn't it? Uh, that antagonism still there. Yeah. Um, it can be positive, of course, in terms of creativity. Yeah. Um, but... Um, I mean, overall, this album surprised me because we've had a couple over the last year of albums of sort of 80s stalwarts coming back and having another go. Well, Duran Duran last podcast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. And, and and I think we had Gary Kemp at some point. We have had Gary Kemp, yes. And, and both of those left me disappointed. Um, this one, though, uh, it's not quite what you expect or it is exactly what you expect. Or maybe even a blend of both concepts. It at is the same definitely. Time. It is definitely both of those things. <laughs> um, but it's re- It's a real. I think it's a real accomplishment. Um, it's got. It's got integrity. Uh, and yet, it's got something more interesting to even the most casual listener. Um, and it and it actually manages to pull off one or two great pop tunes as well, which again, <laughs> neither of those previous bands did. No. Um, with their recent returnings, um, but it starts bizarrely for me. For me, the rest it, it of the has a really odd start because, as, yeah. as I said to you when we walking back, it, yeah. it starts off kind of Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah, ah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, it, it's it really is an odd song to begin with because it's not ref- not reflective of them or no. what follows. Yeah, not at all. Um, no well, small thing. You think you're thinking this is nice, and yeah. if you think that for the opening track, you're thinking, yeah. oh, so they're going that direction, and then. The rest of the album, no, basically is is, is what you'd expect from Tears of Tears of Fears. You're thinking, yeah, okay, so that's an interesting choice for the lead off track. Yeah, I, I and I found I found that that no small thing 
uh, and again, a song about the regret of growing old and loss of freedom, but but sung from a younger man's point of view, which was real again, real interest, interesting dichotomy, and 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 then it followed by Break the Man, which is classic pop. Um, that really reminded me of more of Pets the Pet Shop Boys again. Um, and again, Tears for Fears have always been another one of those bands that everyone always said I should like because I like Depeche Mode and I like the Pet Shop Boys and I like this and I like that. And I, yes. I, was, and I was probably having none of it. Um, but again, re- reminded me more of their recent sort of stuff, like after the album Hotspot that we reviewed a couple of years ago. Remember it well, yeah. Um, and, and, and it's again, the stomper, pop stompability of a track like My Demons, which... With its rhyming, Current single. rhyming cadences and yes. you know your attitude and your longitude and your latitude. I mean, there were some lyrics in here that really made me laugh and smile. Um, classic Tears for Fears, and it's Doctor Who intro as well. Dum da dum. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I have Doctor Who written down here. <laughs> um, and and then you get, and I think I think it's the, the second reference to COVID we've had on the podcast. I think Dubstar sort of slipped in a. Uh, a reference or two um uh, and then we have this sort of really sad romantic one called rivers of mercy to hell with my immunity i'm going to hold you close until the shadows disappear and i just thought oh, that's just lovely <laughs> it is and obviously there's a lot there's, there's, there's several tracks that, well, that that as, as well as two more pointed tracks which are about uh Rowan as well talking about the loss of his wife mm. um, so on the um, title track which was the first single particularly yeah um, which has the kind of repeated refrain of you know that I can't love you more and it's interesting that that's, that's you know one of the sort of, I would say it is that kind of thing that you're kind of thinking oh it's about losing his wife so it should be kind of sad so therefore it should be morbid no which, which, which really, really shouldn't, shouldn't be because it, it is a very uplifting yeah. proper Pop song. The reason, the reason it was the opening, the lead single of the album is because it's a proper mm. catchy single. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, top draw. Um, yeah. Tears for Fears. Got yeah. But also, they also touch on her death on uh, "Please Be Happy," which is sung by Kurt. Yeah. Um, which, you know, he specifically asked Kurt if he would sing it because he because he didn't think he could sing it. Gosh. Apparently, he gets yeah. quite. Still gets quite emotional just hearing Kurt sing it, which is stuff like that. Wow. Um, and as you say, yeah, it's it's interesting because there's lots of familiar territory. Is it, it, it once you get past, once you get into it, it's just like, yeah, this is this is kind of what you'd expect from a Tears for Fears album. Mm. Well crafted, smart pop, mm. um, inventive, interesting arrangements, stuff like that. Kind of stuff that's doesn't get made a lot anymore. Yeah, um, uh, yes. Friendly. Uh, in our current musical world, we find ourselves in with you know over compression and where auto tune and pitch shifting uh, are the norm on pretty much every record and in quite a lot of live performances as well. It has to be said. Um, so it is a reminder of the fact that um, how well they work together as a team. Mm. When it works to produce, to produce, to produce <laughs> really probably good. yeah, a bit yeah. like something. I thought, in fact, obviously, that, 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 like most good partnerships, there's always mm. someone that's slightly in charge, mm. um, and it's getting through that. Um, it's not to, so it's not to say it's all killer. I think there's a couple of bits of it, a bit that are not so good towards the end, um, but overall more than enough class here to remind you that just what a good band they are. Yeah. Um, and apparently they're a good band live now, which apparently they used to suck. Yeah. And the people that say that are them. Now them. Yeah, yeah, of course. Which is apparently why they didn't do it for a lot, because they yeah. apparently joined the 80s, they went, went to as often as you used, used to, because we were shit. It's <laughs> <laughs> our honest. Yes. And that's what I mean, there's real honesty to this album, which which really comes through. Uh, it, it, it really, it's, it's, it's a great album. I should. Uh, I forgot. Quite surprised by it. Really liked um, uh, Karina Round's vocals on the chorus of uh, yeah. "Long Long Time" as well. Yeah. Really, really nice mix. Kind of lifts that song to a yeah. a different level as well. Having that extra kind of voice in there that kind of contrast between the male and female. Mm-hmm. So just her singing the chorus of that song, I think, really mm. a bit of a treat, frankly. Um, 
So yeah. Awesome. Favourite of the... Is that your favourite of the podcast? Uh, do you know what? I think it edges it uh, surprisingly so because I didn't expect it to whatsoever. Um, I still really rate the Arcade Fire album, uh, We, um, and I think that will grow with repeated listenings. Although no doubt we'll come back in five years from now and you'll quote that back at me. <laughs> yeah. I, w- I would say listen to Grow Off the Sigrid album and that would be more rewarding. <laughs> Um, that would be my advice. So I'm going to go with Tears for Fears. Uh, I don't know. It shocked me, actually. I'm cu- I, I am I'm kind of... It's been a, uh, yeah, I'm re- yeah, I know what you mean. I'm cut about three or four ways on this one. I'm kind of torn. I might actually, just to be awkward, mm-hmm. um, actually go with the uh, Sunflower Bean album. Oh, that's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Until next time. Indeed.